Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So today we're going to be taking a look at a piece of software called Universal Radio Hacker. Now this software is available for Windows, OS X and Linux. I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can download this from. Now this software is designed to provide you with a whole host of tools which allows you to record a segment of RF, analyze that segment and then either try and decode it, check it for security leaks or even crack some sophisticated encodings or even perform a replay attack. That's assuming you have an appropriate transmitter. Now in this video, I'll be showing you how you can record the RF packet from a doorbell transmitter and then look at the raw data bits and then retransmitting it to play the actual doorbell without pressing the doorbell fob. Now for this, I'll be using a hack RF which can transmit and receive. So with the Hack RF one connected, um, we need to load up Universal Radio Hacker. And the first thing that we need to do is just go over to where it says Spectrum Analyzer. Up here on the top left, we have a device dropdown. So you can select whichever SDR receiver or transmitter that you've got connected. So for me, it's Hack RF. Gonna click this little refresh button here to make sure that it connects to the right device. I'm going to untick DC correction for now. I'm going to click the start button. So as you can see, we've got a center frequency of 433899 is where it's looking. And what we're looking for here is a peak when I press the key fob. So I'm just going to go ahead now and press the bell key fob and we should see a peak signal. As you can see here in red, it remembers where that transmission was. So I just want to make sure that I'm dead center on there and I left click on the mouse. Click stop, close that down, go to file, record signal, and it has remembered the frequency that we was on. Just gonna make sure that we've got the correct device set up here. And then we're gonna just press start. Now, as soon as I press start and it actually connects and starts recording, I'm gonna press the bell fob once. And then I press stop. As you can hear in the background, the bell is actually obviously ringing when I press it. So what I wanna do now is save this. So I'm gonna to go to save. I'm just gonna leave it as the default file name, click save. And I'm gonna close this window. Now as I close this window, it takes our signal and puts it into the interpretation window. Now you can clearly see here the main transmission from the key fob. We've got a lot of other blank space. So obviously as soon as it started recording, there was nothing transmitting. And then after it as well, between the time I released my finger from the bell button and when I stopped recording, we've got some blank space. But what we can do with the interpretation window is we can actually select parts of the transmission. We can also zoom in as well using the thumb wheel and we can have a real good look at the detail. Before I get into this, what I'm going to do is just trim this up. So I'm going to select the signal and then I'm going to do crop to selection. And that has now got rid of all the blank transmission. So as you can see here, this is an analog representation of that signal. You can see from the left as I start to press the key fob that the signal is extremely strong. And as time goes on, it starts to fade as the transmission starts to get weaker. What I would imagine here is that it's actually energizing the transmitter part of the key fob. And as time progresses, the energy is decreasing and then the output from the key fob is actually less. You can see this quite clearly with the amplitude decreasing as time goes on. Now what we're doing here is we're actually looking at the analog signal view down here in the bottom right hand corner. It says signal view. I can change this to demodulated if I wish, and this will actually show us a demodulated signal. Now, if we wanna play this back or retransmit this using the Hack RF, we can easily do that by using the play button here up on the top left-hand corner. So let's just try replaying this. So I'll click the play button, make sure that I've got the correct device configured, the frequency is set right, and I'm just gonna click start. Let's see if the doorbell actually plays. And there we go. It actually works. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's have a little look at something else. As you can see here, it looks like we've got quite a lot of 
packet transmissions going here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, and maybe even 23 at really low kind of uh, amplitude there. So I wonder if it requires all of these or whether it is actually just repeating the same packet. Now remember this recording here is actually just one tap on the doorbell button. So let's take one of the samples. Let's take the first one, for example, just by left clicking and selecting it. I'm gonna do a create signal from selection. So this one here down the bottom is just that first packet. Let's just do a quick auto detect. Uh, let's try sending this now, just this single packet. So click play. Let's see if that works. Uh, and there we go. It actually does work. So it's just using that single packet, but it's repeating it many times in the main transmission. Now, as Universal Radio Hacker is an actual piece of software for investigating unknown wireless protocols, it's going to have a whole load of tools and features, which to be honest, to me, uh, is a bit kind of over my head at the moment, but I think it's a really interesting tool. To give you a little look around, I mean, obviously we saw earlier how we can zoom into a particular waveform, we can select it, we can have a look, um, at the uh, modulation type. There's a button here that says auto detect parameters. That's quite useful and will work on quite small recordings. And when we're looking at the analog side, this is how it looks. Um, if we want to change this to change the signal view to demodulated, what we have here is a green and kind of brown area. As you can see, you can actually adjust it. What we're doing, we're changing the center point. Now to explain that a little bit further, if I just scroll in here and have a look, we can see we've got these on off signals. On is up and down is off. So this translates pretty much to binary. Now if we go below that, then it isn't gonna detect or isn't gonna show any of the signals. Now this line does actually need to be somewhere where it can detect between an on and an off. And as you can see here down in the bottom, this is our decoded bits. So as you can see, it's in binary, 1111, 000, etc. And also the great thing is, as you just saw there, if I wanna find that particular bit, then you can actually select it here down the bottom and it will show you in the signal view window. Now there's some other tabs on Universal Radio Hacker. There's one here called Analysis. Now this might look quite complicated, but what it allows you to do is edit some of these bits. So if you was decoding a particular protocol, but you wanted to change something on it, maybe it's a controller that's transmitting particular bits of data to switch various relays. Maybe you wanna investigate and see if you can change certain bits within that packet to switch other relays. That's just kind of a general example, but there's so much more you can do with this. I'm not really gonna go into this anymore because I still got a lot to learn with this. And the whole point of this video was to show you how easy it is to run Universal Radio Hacker and record a signal and then replay it as a replay attack. Okay, it's just a doorbell in this particular example, but I'm sure there's lots of other useful things that you could use this for. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. If you've got any comments, please leave them down below. If you've used this software before, or if you're an expert at this, I'd love to hear from you on what projects or what you've managed to use this software for. That would be absolutely great. Also wanna say a massive thank you to all my current patrons. If you wanna get involved, that's patreon.com forward slash techminds. And don't forget, I'm also on Twitter. I'll leave my handle down below. Until the next video, guys, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.